Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now answering a question from the textbook from the International A Level at Excel Pure Mathematics P3 book. And this is from chapter 3, the chapter review exercise, question 24, which is the last question on the paper. This is on page 68 of the book. And we're asked to prove that for x values between 0 and 1, that arc cosine x is equal to arc tan of the square root of 1 minus x squared over x. Okay, so first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to use, um, first of all, let's let's say let theta be equal to arc cosine x. So I'm called the angle theta arc cosine x. Okay, so that's the angle theta. Let me just make that a bit more neat. Arc cosine x is theta. Now that's the same thing as saying x theta is equal to inverse cosine of x. It's another way of writing arc cosine and inverse cosine. A lot of people prefer arc cosine for certain reasons to not mix up with reciprocal functions. But that's another matter. So both of those things are the same. They mean the same thing. Now if I want to find what x is, I can take the cosine of both sides of this equation. So this gives the cosine of theta equals, if I take the cosine of the inverse cosine of x, they cancel out leaving with just x. Now there's two ways we could proceed here. Probably the easiest way in this particular case would be to think about the triangle. So I say cosine theta is equal to x over 1. And then I make a right angle triangle just a random right angle triangle it has to be right angled and then I can call one of these angles theta for example I say this is theta so if cosine theta is equal to x over 1 this would be the adjacent side and this would be the hypotenuse and the other shorter side therefore would be the square root of the hypotenuse squared which is 1 squared minus the, the other shorter side squared which would be x squared so 1 squared is 1 so I don't need to write the squared there so that's the square root of 1 minus x squared. And if I want to write down now the tan of theta, I can say the tan of theta, therefore, is going to be the opposite over the adjacent, which is the square root of 1 minus x squared over x. Okay, so therefore, we can say theta is equal to inverse tan of, I'll take the inverse tan of both sides, of 1 minus x squared, that's on the square root, over x. So we've proved that, you know, theta is equal to arc cosine x and also theta is equal to arc tan of x of 1 minus x squared, sorry, over x. Okay, so we've proved that these two are equal. Therefore, we can say arc cosine x is equal to arc tan of 1 minus x squared over x. So we've proved that fact now and we can see that in this range both of them are true. If we draw the graph, both of them exist in that range. If I draw the graph of cosine, um, arc cosine x, it's the inverse of the cosine curve. So it's like the x and y coordinates switch around. So this is 1, this is a minus 1, this is pi over 2 and this is pi. Okay, that's for the cosine curve. That's the inverse cosine curve exists between these two values, between minus 1 and 1 and between 0 and pi. Okay, it can't go further on from this or further on from that, otherwise it wouldn't be a function. So it stops here. Its range is only between 0 and pi for the cosine. Okay, but for the tangent curve, the range starts at minus pi over 2, where you have an asymptote, and pi over 2 where you have the other asymptote, and it goes something like this. It's the inverse of the tan curve. So it goes like this. It has an asymptote there and there. So we can see but that between um, 0 and 1, they intersect. Okay, they both have, they both exist within, uh, between 0 and 1, they both have, uh, you know, uh, an area which is common in that range. Okay, so they both produce, oops, let me just get rid of that. I forgot, forgot to put the highlight one. Okay, they they both will intersect in that region there. Okay, between 0 and 1, they both will intersect. So there will be a value of theta for which the arc cosine of an angle will give you the same as the arc tan of an angle in that region. When, uh, you know, in the region when x is between 0 and 1, there's going to be an intersection where they will be equal to each other.
Okay, so we can see that that's true for that. All right. Now, if we think about the area between minus 1 and 0, however, let me just make it a bit neater this time. Between minus 1 and 0, okay, you have, as I said, the, the cosine curve. It starts from... It starts from pi over 2, and between minus 1 and 1, and it goes like this. And it stops at pi. Okay? And the tan curve starts at minus pi over 2, which would be minus pi over 2. There's an asymptote at pi over 2 and minus pi over 2. So there's an asymptote here, and an asymptote... Oops an asymptote here as well okay and the tan curve will look something like this so between 0 and minus 1 between 0 and minus 1 okay between these two values here okay there's no intersection between these two okay so we can say arc cosine x and um, arc tan of root 1 minus x squared over x. Okay, there's no, there's no common range between them. There's no common range in the rear area between minus 1 and 0. Okay, for them to have a common range, this graph of y equals arc tan x okay has to shift okay has to shift upwards let me just get rid of this and put this again okay so so this has to shift upwards okay we could say from there up to there so it has to shift by pi for there to be a you know intersection okay so they intersect now but this is the graph not of y equals arc tan x this is this is pi plus arc tan of sorry not x arc tan of all of that arc tan of the square root of 1 minus x squared over x. Okay, it has to be shifted up by pi, okay, for it to get give a solution. So we can see that if that goes up by pi, there will be an intersection. Okay, so we can say that arc cosine x is equal to pi plus arc tan of the square root of 1 minus x squared over x. Okay, we can also think of it as, for example... Um, we can think of, we know that the tan of um, theta, okay, the tan of theta is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared over x. Okay, we know that, all right? And we know that the tan of the angle which is either pi more or pi less than theta will also give us that same ratio of 1 minus x squared over x. They'll give us that same ratio. Right, so if we choose the tan theta minus pi, that will also that will give us this one minus x squared of x. Remember, pi more or pi less than the angle gives us the same ratio for tan. So then I can say that if I take the inverse tan of both sides, I'm left with theta minus pi equals the inverse tan of this one minus square root of one minus x squared over x. So therefore, I can say theta equals pi plus inverse tan which is the same as saying arc tan of the square root of 1 minus x squared over x you can think of it like that okay because it says here where k is a constant to be found so you know we want it to be um this to be translated upwards so we're in that range we need it to be plus k um you know a plus pi that you add to it okay because we don't want it to go down we want it to go up all right so we have to has to translate upwards by pi 
Okay, every pi you get the same um, ratio, so we want it to be there where it will intersect with the inverse cosine curve. Right, this is a bit of an abstract type of topic, all right, and it's to do with the fact that a uh, function cannot exist, um, um, uh, be a proper function unless it's only one to, you know, if, uh, unless, uh, unless it's a function that, that doesn't have like one to many, it should be either one to one or many to one. And if you continue this function that this way, it's going to be a uh, one to many function and that won't be a function basically, one to many relationship which won't be a function so that this sign the inverse cosine is limited between zero and pi and the inverse tan is limited between minus pi over two and pi over two so in between zero and minus one there's no intersection between them so this has to be translated upwards by pi for it to have an intersection that's why you have to put for, for this range for this domain here okay the the solution to this will be pi plus arc tan of this angle there okay so that's how to tackle this question. It's a bit of a more higher level question, but um, I hope that was kind of clear. Thank you for watching. Other questions from this particular um, chapter of the textbook. If, you have, if I've answered any other questions from this chapter, you will find them in the playlist that should appear in this region here. Other questions from trigonometry of P3. Um, in general, you can find them in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And if you click on the video, the link for the video here will tell you how to use my channel effectively to find what you are trying to find. Thank you for watching and see you soon.